Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am gonna be talking about five makeup products that I can't live without. Now, let me go ahead and quickly say, I understand that I can completely live without these things. It is a phrase. I don't want to live without them. If I had to get rid of every single thing, I would want these products to still be left. Some of them overlap with a video I did a while ago talking about products that I use every day and don't talk about as much. Some of them don't. And honestly, it was way easier than I thought to narrow it down to five. It took me under a minute sitting at my vanity to say, this, 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 no questions asked. So let's go ahead and jump in. I will, as always, have everything listed and linked down below because especially one category is a category. I have many products within that category. And let's go ahead and start with that, shall we? Correctors. I have very dark circles <laughs> genetically that will always be dark. Not much makes them better, but there are some things that definitely make them worse, like lack of sleep and allergies and hormones and all the good stuff that we have to deal with. So I honestly need a corrector every day, and I feel like I need a corrector more than I need a concealer. If I go in with just a concealer, it can look very gray under my eyes, whereas some of the correctors I'm gonna talk about, even though they are peach in nature, which is the color that works best on dark under eyes, especially for me, if you have darker skin, I would go more for the orange shades. Once they blend in with the darkness under my eyes, a lot of them look skin tone. So I could even go without a concealer and do often on days where I necessarily don't want to put a full face of makeup on, I will still put a little touch of corrector under my eyes and be good to go. I have a lot of favorite correctors. They serve different purposes for me. Some aren't even marketed as correctors. They are concealers. One of them that I've been talking about a lot lately is the Chantecaille Le Camouflage the camouflage, the camouflage stilo anti fatigue corrector pen. This is in the shade number three. I love this so much. I'm actually out of it. I have a backup, but I haven't opened it yet because I really want to try to at least finish one other corrector before I do. But this is phenomenal, especially if you have dry under eyes, because I do find it to be very hydrating. If you want something with SPF, two correctors that I love for that. One is actually marketed as a concealer. One is more marketed as an eye cream three-in-one. This is the Jane Ardell Enlighten Plus Concealer. I use the shade number one, which definitely has a more peach undertone, and the Color Science Total Eye Three-in-One Renewal Therapy. So this is SPF 30, this is SPF 35. Both have that peach undertone which helps cancel the darkness, but it also has the added SPF. And then a couple of just straight up makeup correctors that I love are the Clinique Even Better All Over Primer and Color Corrector. This is in the shade, I believe it's just peach. They do have, I think they have a lighter one, like a pinky color. Love this one. The Bobbi Brown Stick Corrector I love. This is in the shade Bisque. I've used this lots on the channel. The Fit Glow Beauty Corrector in Peach that I love. And then the one I'm using today is the Glow Skin Beauty Luminous Brightening Concealer. So this is also marketed as a concealer, but it is in the shade Peach, and it definitely has that peach undertone. So definitely something I do not want to be without. Because if you've watched any of my Get Ready With Me videos and you see me do that step, you will see what a complete difference it makes in how awake it makes me feel and how awake it makes me look and just all around makes me look like I have more makeup on than I do because covering up that darkness just brings the face together. This one may not be very exciting, but for me especially, it is absolutely crucial and I'm talking about brow pencils. I have to have a brow pencil. If I am not wearing a stitch of makeup, I will put my brows on. To me, brows are not makeup because I have, mm, right there, my brows stop growing. So everything you see on the other side of that is drawn on every single day. I do not have many brows, brows at all. 
hypothyroidism has completely taken them away. <laughs> and in order for my face to look like a face, I need to frame it with some brows. So again, they're not even to me a makeup step. It's just a necessity step every day. And I need a pencil because I do have so much that I have to draw on. I really can't do it as well with just a powder. Now, these are the two pencils that I love the most at the moment. Another one that I don't have, but that I love is the brow pencil from Beauty Pie. In fact, if I looked in my empties bag, I would find a few from them. But this is Jane Iredell. And I can use a different, a couple of different colors within this line. I'll swatch the two that I use. I have Ash Blonde and Blonde. So Blonde is right here. It's a little warmer. And then Ash Blonde is a little cooler in tone and a little bit darker. And then this one is new to my collection or newer, but I've been loving it. Sigma sent over some brow products. I talked about their brow duo in my favorites last month, but this is the brow pencil in light and I really, really like it. It's a great color for my eyebrows. It's more in line with the tone of the Ash Blonde. That's it right there. So it definitely has a cooler undertone and it just works. The formula of both of these are great. I find that they are not so waxy that they don't actually lay down pigment, which I definitely have come across in brow pencils before, but they are not so pigmented where I feel like I have to go in and do a ton of work to dial it down. So definitely a necessity. Out of all the things that I've talked about, this one has to be the most necessary for me personally, because I firmly believe that brows make the face. They can make it or they can break it. Let's talk about the base foundation product that I have on my face today. And if I had to get rid of all of my foundations, which if y'all know me, you know that is my favorite category of makeup, that would be a very sad day. But if I did, this would definitely be the very first one that I repurchased. And it is the Jane Ardell Liquid Minerals. Am I a broken record for some people that have watched me for a very long time? Quite possibly. But this is also quite possibly one of the best base products that I have ever used. It really checks a lot of boxes for me. It gives my favorite kind of coverage, which is more of a sheer to light coverage, sometimes medium, but it, I mean, you would really have to work to get it up to medium. It is more of like a light coverage. It is moisturizing, and that is the most important part for me because as we get into the colder months, I'm going to be reaching for this even more because even if I have visibly dry skin from like my tretinoin use and the dry weather and the cold weather, this will still moisturize that enough where I feel like I can wear it on top and it's not going to make it look bad. And I hope that makes sense. These are the two colors that I use the most. This is suntan and this is probably, um, my third one of suntan and then warm sienna I sometimes mix together with suntan I can use suntan by itself warm sienna is a little too yellow for me um, but I do like how they look mixed together which is what I have on my skin right now and I just can't say enough about it I will put a card up for my full review I do think this does not get enough love because it does have a little bit of a learning curve as far as application and understanding the formula and knowing how it works best on the skin. So if you are interested in this product or if you have this product and you feel like it didn't work for you, I definitely recommend checking that video out because I do go more in depth about how to get it to work the best. And trust me, once you get it to work, it works. It is just so, so glorious. <laughs> I love this product so much if you can't tell. It's the same broken record for this next product that I'm going to talk about. But honestly, when I thought about doing this video and the reason that I feel like it was so easy and fast for me to choose my products is because these are the ones that I repurchase the most. These are ones that when I run out of them, I'm not automatically wanting to find something else within that category to try something new. I just don't even think about it. I go on and I repurchase the same exact product because they never fail me. I have gone through multiples and the results that they give are just something I don't want to give up. So obviously I had to include my hourglass ambient lighting powder and this is in the shade radiant light. Now 
For this specific shade, I believe this might be my fourth compact. I went through a couple of dim lights as well. I also have the, is it infinity light or it was like a special edition they came out with, which I do like for this step, but it's not my favorite. Radiant light is my favorite. And the step that I'm talking about is buffing, is taking the product on to a brush. This is an It Cosmetics Duo Fiber and really going in, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on my face right now and buffing the skin to where you do not have any harsh lines for bronzer or blush and everything looks really seamless. Now, can you do this with any powder? Yes. You could even do this with no product and just go in with the brush. However, the technique of buffing in addition to this powder is what I love the most because there's something about the formula of this powder that gives a very soft finish to the skin. It gives a very smooth, blurred finish to the skin. It's almost like putting a filter on top of your skin while also ensuring that you don't have any harsh lines. So while you can use other powders and while I have used other powders, nothing in my collection compares to this. And it is something that I just will continue to repurchase over and over and over again. I have multiple colors in my kit to do this technique on my clients. It is an everyday thing for me when I wear makeup. Absolutely love it. And like I said, just no other powder comes close to the formula of those. And then finally, I have to talk about a lipstick. I've talked about this in my empties before. I've talked about it in my favorite nude lipsticks. I know I don't typically venture out past nude lipsticks. Talked about this before too. It's just not my comfort zone. There are so many amazing makeup channels that do different lipsticks every single look. That's not my focus. I like to focus more on skin and eyes and I'm comfortable in my nude lips. Some people love that. Some people have a very large problem with that that I just can't wrap my head around because I personally don't lose sleep or have issues with people's choices of makeup on YouTube like some people seem to have with mine. All that to say, I do have a very favorite nude lipstick and it is from MAC and it is one that I go through so often. I cannot tell you how many of these I go through. I constantly have backups in my drawer. Right now I think I have one, usually I have two at all times because I will go through one of these every couple of months. It is the lipstick I keep in my purse and reapply all throughout the day. It's what I call a pocket lipstick. I don't need to have a mirror to apply this. It just works for me and I love it and it's creme de nude. Now I don't have it on today because this would come off even lighter on camera and it, I don't think it looks good on camera. I do like the way it looks in person. So, you know, I choose different new lipsticks to wear on camera, but this is the color right here. I wonder what it says about people like me that have a flat lipstick. <laughs> you know, you see those like memes and stuff about what does your lipstick shape say about you? I need to look it up and see what a flat lipstick says about you because all the ones that I use a lot end up looking like this. But this is just, I mean, what it says, it is a nude shade. To me, it is more on the neutral side. I don't feel like it pulls too peach or too pink. So it really does work with every kind of look. Now, if I had to choose, I do typically go towards more pinky nudes, but this one, in my opinion, falls in the middle. And again, it's just something that I go through so much. And if I had to pick one lipstick to have, it would be this because I just feel like it looks the best and it's the one I'm most comfortable in. It's the easiest. It is a go-to. So that is a roundup of my five makeup products that I don't want to be without. If you want to see a separate skincare video, I can definitely do that. I could even do a perfume top five that I don't wanna live without. So let me know if you're interested in either one of those. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know what products you can't live without down in the comment section. And again, I will have everything listed and linked in the description box. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.